Embark on a journey through the veiled corridors of biblical enigma, where the untold mysteries of Ham's son, Canaan, unfold. Was it a curse or an ancient prophecy that shrouded Canaan's destiny? Join us as we decode the cryptic connections between the Grail kingship, the lineage of Ham and Nimrod, and the mystical Goat of Mendez. Brace yourself for a revelation that challenges the very essence of biblical narratives, as we unveil secrets that have long been concealed. Get ready to question the unquestioned in a quest for the truth that defies conventional wisdom. Canaan's Curse – Unraveling Mystery Noah's wife was Emzara, who bore him three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet, as per the Book of Jubilees. Following the flood, Noah got drunk on his vineyard wine, and Ham found him naked in his tent. However, Shem and Japhet covered him with a garment. Later on, Noah cursed Ham's son, Canaan, for having seen him naked. The reason behind this curse remains unexplained, and it is unclear why Ham is referred to as Noah's youngest son in Genesis chapter 9, verse 24, when he is portrayed as the middle-born son in Genesis chapter 5, verse 32, and chapter 6, verse 10. A positive cultural distinction is drawn, nevertheless, between Ham and Shem at the time of the curse with Shem alone being granted access to Jehovah, while Ham's son Canaan is denounced for no apparent reason. Cursed, blessed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be to his brethren. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. As identified in the Anchor Bible, this whole sequence supplies more questions than answers. In fact, it supplies no answers at all, but a reasoning is found in the more accurate tradition that Canaan was a son, not a grandson of Noah, while Ham was not a member of the family. It was from Canaan that the first dynasty of Babylon descended, and this posed a real problem for the Hebrew compilers of Genesis, who were themselves held captive by the kings of Babylon. Unraveling Biblical Lineage Deceptions the Babylonian heritage had to be discredited. The curse took care of that by denouncing the Canaanites, while at the same time making it possible to overawe the potent Hamite strain with the Shemite succession in the ensuing list of thoroughly confusing beginnings. Had Ham been correctly listed as the historical son of Tubal Cain, this subterfuge would not have been possible and Ham's important grandson Nimrod could not have been sidestepped, as he was, with just a passing mention. The lineage of Grail kingship can be traced back to Ham and Nimrod, who descended from Cain, Lamech, and Tubal Cain. Although the Sethian line through Noah and Shem rose to positions of city governorship in the generations before Abraham, they were of lesser standing in comparison to Ham's lineage. The heritage of Ham was crucial to messianic history, and an escutcheon was created to represent it. This Hamite arms included a dragon symbol and was prominently used in the documents as late as the Stemma Jacobi of the 1630, Genethliacan held in the Rosicrucian archive. Nimrod, the grandson of Ham, was an important figure in Mesopotamian history, ruling over various cities. To gain a better understanding of Nimrod, it is necessary to explore references outside of the Bible, particularly those found in the Targum. The Targum is a collection of ancient Aramaic writings that provide additional details about Nimrod's reign and accomplishments. The Targum relates that Nimrod was the father of an Egyptian pharaoh but does not give his name. However, a separate Ethiopic text refers to another pharaoh who was contemporary with Nimrod phonetically calling him Yanuf. This pharaoh is easily identifiable. His name is correctly written as Anajib, and he was a king of the first dynasty of Egypt, reigning about 3000 BC at precisely the time of Nimrod. Nimrod's Dynasty and Symbolic Enlightenment After the reign of Anajib, a new dynasty emerged in Egypt, firmly establishing Nimrod's heritage with his family. The second pharaoh of the dynasty, King Runeb, introduced the veneration of the goat of Mendes into Egypt, directly associated with Ham, Nimrod's grandfather in both the Grail and Dragon traditions. The sacred goat was the zodiacal goat of Capricorn, often called Kem, Shem, or Ham, and located in the city of Mendes, northwest of Avaris in the Egyptian delta. 
According to the Dragon Court tradition, Ham was the designated Archon of the 10th Age of Capricorn, and his symbol was an inverted pentagram. The two uppermost points of the pentagram represented the horns of the Goat of Mendez, while the two downward sloping side points represented the ears, and the single base point was the chin and beard, as identified by Chevalier David Wood's outstanding studies of sacred geometry. When a pentagram is seen in this inverted male position, Kem is an ancient depiction, an emerald jewel at the horns signifies a pentagram's central point. When rotated, it transformed into a Venus Lilith representation with the jewel in the vulva position. The inverted Kem version may feature flames known as astral light rising between the horns. Reversed into the Venus position, these flames are identified as starfire, the universal essence of the goddess. Throughout history, the pentagram, whether representing astral light or starfire, has symbolized enlightenment. It is linked to the pre-Jewish Sabbath, a time for reflection outside of regular toil. Kem and Mendez, known as the sabbatical goat, is associated with this tradition, leading to the contemporary use of sabbatical in academia. Like the serpent, the goat symbolizes attainment, evident in Albrecht Durer's 16th century portrayal of Adam and Eve. Christian Fear of Wisdom This tradition aligns the pentagram and sabbatical goat with heterodox Christians, such as the medieval Cathars of Languedoc. In contrast, the Orthodox Christian Church sought to suppress ancient wisdom by creating a religion centered on salvation from the unknown. This salvation required submission to the authority of bishops, opposing the spiritually based doctrines of the Gnostic movement, which sought to discover the unknown. The phrase was declared blasphemous by the Inquisition, while the pentagram and the goat were denounced as symbols of black magic and witchcraft. From those times, even to the present day in some church-influenced circles, personal attainment and learning that does not conform to bishops' opinions has been considered heretical. It is a fact that the pursuit of individual knowledge and wisdom has been met with fear and suspicion throughout history. One clear example of this is the portrayal of the Goat of Mendez as the embodiment of the devil in many sensationalist novels. These novels often depict crucifixes and holy water as the weapons used against the supposed emissaries of Satan, perpetuating the notion that individual wisdom is something to be feared. The Goat of Mendez was also directly associated with alchemy, and although the word alchemy derives from alchemy, the science of overcoming the blackness, it had a secondary root in alchem, the chem. In this regard, Kem, the black ruler of Mendes, was identified with a certain Azazel of Capricorn, whom the Book of Enoch defies as a watcher. According to the Book of Enoch, Azazel taught humans about metals and how to work them, including the use of antimony, also known as stibium, with atomic number 51. This element is an essential ingredient in the alchemist process of producing the Philosopher's Stone. In ancient Arab culture, antimony was referred to as kur or kol, the word alcohol has its origins in the Arabic word alcohol, which refers to the highly refined philosophical mercury obtained by distilling wine spirits over antimony. In the Bible, Azazel is mentioned, but not in the authorized English language translation. The Vulgate Book of Leviticus refers to the custom of atonement, Hebrew Kippur, from the Assyrian Cooper 23. It states that Aaron should cast lots upon two goats, one for the Lord and one for Azazel. The goat that was chosen for the Lord was to be sacrificed as a sin offering, and the other was to be sent into the wilderness as an atonement. However, the more familiar English translation is quite confusing. This is because the name Azazel has been replaced by the word scapegoat. The reason for this is that the original sequence made it clear that offerings were made both to Jehovah and to the Kem Azazel. The Book of Enoch, which was not included in the Bible, drew readers' attention to the direct link between Azazel and Hermetic alchemy. It identified Azazel as a master metallurgist and said that he taught men about the use of antimony. The term Hermetic comes from Hermes Trismegistus, Greek Hermes the Thrice Great. He was so named from the great works of ancient Anunnaki scientists, in which he stated, I am called Hermes Trismegistus, having three parts of the philosophy of all the world. He is better known to Egyptologists as Thoth, or Jedi, 
the scribe of the company of gods. As we navigate the labyrinth of ancient lore, the echoes of forgotten whispers linger. The legacy of Canaan, entwined with the shadows of the Goat of Mendez, leaves us standing on the precipice of revelation. Join us next time as we continue our pursuit of the arcane, where each revelation unravels more questions than answers. Now, let's hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and leave a comment. Until next time.